Okay, welcome everyone. Um, it's just gone 4 p.m. here in the UK. And today I am very excited to be talking to you guys about awesome apps that have been produced by other law firms and how you can build your own. Uh, so it's quite a long session, I'll be honest with you. Um, it was one of the most difficult webinars to put together because there are so many awesome apps out there. How do we limit it down? How do we group them together to make sure that you guys get the most out of the next kind of 45 minutes to an hour? Uh, so welcome everybody. Um, Dave McDermott is my colleague. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please uh, feel free to use the chat feature. You can email directly to Dave and Dave will answer or pose all of the questions at the end so we can get through all of the content. Uh, please keep yourself on mute uh, until the Q&A and we'll bring you in if, uh, if need to, but it's probably easier just to use the chat feature. So without further ado, uh, let's kick off. I'm Mike Gallup. I'm the commercial director here at Fliplit. Uh, more about me and about Fliplit a little bit later on. Uh, what's the agenda? Okay, so a quick few slides on the impact of mobile. How is mobile affecting our lives? What's it doing to the industry? The key things to include to, that makes an app an awesome app. Um, things for you to guys to think about when you're looking to produce a solution. Uh, a quick overview of Fliplit, because although many of you would have heard of us, some of you may not have, so I've just got a quick couple of slides just to give you an overview of who we are. Um, we've grouped some of these awesome apps together into emergency management, practice specific, country specific, and then internal solutions. So I'm going to be showing you lots of examples. Let me be clear right now that not all of the apps that I'm going to show you have been produced using Fliplit's prefab app building platform. They are purely apps that are in the public domain. They've either had publicity or news articles or they're in the public app store. We think they're awesome. We want to share them with you to show what the industry is doing with mobile right now. And then I'm going to take a little bit of time at the end and I'm going to build an app from scratch to show you how you guys can start prototyping and bringing your ideas to life. And then we're going to answer any of the questions that you have. So we're thinking 45 minutes, uh, there, thereabouts, and, uh, and then we'll let you get back to your day. So, first of all, a quote. This comes from a solicitor in the UK, and I think it really embodies what it is that's happening at the moment. And it kind of covers what's happening in our, in our lives. Clients do want more contact. During COVID times, it's been even harder to, to really engage with our clients. But they want to be kept up to date. They want to know what's happening. And using the telephone is not something that we do. They're now called smartphones. We use it for pretty much everything except for for phoning people. So how do we take advantage of this super powerful tool that's in the palm of our hand constantly in order to keep our clients and our staff up to date? Mobile has officially taken over desktop uh, in order to get onto the internet. And the majority of firms, I wouldn't say this is, this is legal industry right now, but the majority of employers are using mobile phones as part of their activities for their employees. And over 70% of them employees are spending more than two hours a week accessing that information. So the trends are there, the industry, uh, the marketplace is very much working on a mobile basis. The idea is how do we tap into that as a legal industry? How do we supply our, our colleagues? How do we supply our clients with the tools that they want in the, the format that they're used to receiving it? A recent uh, report said that the trends are driving the need for enterprise apps. So what we mean by enterprise apps, these are apps for a defined audience. These are not apps that are just publicly available in the app store for anyone to use as and when. These are ones that are specified either uh, for your staff or for specific clients. So it's that improved communication is top of the list. Emails are inundated. My inbox since COVID doubled with the number of emails we're getting through. We have a much more mobile workforce. I think that this, this report was done pre-COVID and it was already growing then. So having people who are out and about, not always on their, at their desk or not always on their laptop, um, how do we engage with them? And the user experience, this is growing more and more. And all of you guys, there's been so many new website updates this year where firms are really focused on how do we get that best experience for the user coming to our site who can really understand what it is that we do. And that's the same now with mobile. 
So I'm going to run through seven of the business reasons why you should be uh, and other law firms are producing mobile apps. And number one is improved processes. So firms and a lot of the examples I'm going to show you is about how do we make things easier to do, faster to do. Whether this means an internal process or whether it means for, uh, for your clients. An example recently, we had a Scottish law firm who had a fixed fee price was charged to uh, prepare a will. Um, and it was a very laborious paper-based process. They were able to launch an app that digitalized that whole process. So the efficiency gains uh, were huge. The competitive advantage, what you're gonna see here is I've tried to not focus too heavily on any one firm, but there are a number of firms. And if you're gonna go off and do your own research after this and look into these, you'll see that certain firms are kind of leading the way through this and they're standing out. They're, they're able to show that they have got a, a grasp of this and able to show the solutions that they can offer, sometimes better than firms that may have a, a greater influence in that area. New target markets is key. There's lots of talk about the big four entering into this market. So looking after your customers, retaining them, but also where's the next customer coming from? So being able to have an additional way of communicating is, is important. The overall experience we've kind of covered, this really does set the tone for where does your firm sit? Is your firm still a firm that promotes the fact that they still use fax machines or are you a firm that is up to date with the latest technology? Employee efficiency, absolutely. Intranets are great, but the majority of firms, their intranets are locked down. So they're only on site. They cannot get all of the information that they need. So enable your employees to work from anywhere and get access to everything that they need to. And of course, that leads to satisfaction, but also being able to run NPS surveys or, or just employee satisfaction surveys and listening to your staff, being able to give them a platform to be able to voice their opinions and their thoughts and their ideas uh, is key to success in the future. And finally, the most common one is just to provide better access to information. With all firms, if nothing else, we've got more data than probably any other industry. Well, how do we make that accessible to our clients or to our partners when they need it. So they're the key business reasons, but let's get on and let's look into, well, before we show you the apps that, that we've identified for this webinar, let's look at, and I promise this is the last one with a ton of bullet points, uh, let's look at what makes uh, an app awesome. So the first thing is simplicity. You'll notice that a lot of these apps are kind of single use. They're really focused or targeted into one key practice, one key area, in some cases, a very small area. But it makes it vitally important to that end user. The last thing they want is to have to click three, four, five times to find the information. Simplicity is key when it comes to applications. Speed apps will load much faster. They're designed for mobile. They will work and they will work faster than they would do if you had a mobilized, a mobile optimized website. The key to this is where well, it will work offline. So the flexibility of having that available as a web app so they can still access it and get the same experience on a website, but they can also use it on their Android devices, whether it be the tablets, whether it be the, the mobile phones. And that flexibility to be able to work offline is really key. Of course, your apps have to be secure. This is the number one requirement. Um, so, of course, ensuring that you've got, if you are going to put any sensitive information into these applications, or you're going to be collecting sensitive information from your clients or from your user base, that ensure that you've got the right encryption or security for each individual app. Um, lastly, well, not lastly, but search. The ability to find the information quickly uh, is vital, and that's where these apps really come in useful. If you're still supplying any of your customers with brochures or with uh, ring binders full of information, think about how can we put that into an app that allows the end users to find the information that's relevant to them. Customizing your applications to make them represent your brand is going to be key to ensuring that you get that message out there. Personalization, this is where it also differs from a website because this allows the, the end user to determine how that, app, how that app works for them. They get to choose what information is populated in it and they get to save the information that's relevant to them. It isn't just a one size fits all solution. 
notifications, things like in-app notifications, push notifications, look at the research. These cut through the noise. You get much greater engagement than you do sending out emails. So if you are looking for alternative ways to get that information directly into the palm of your hand, think about your own experience. How many apps have you got on your phone? You choose which ones uh, send you a notification, pops up on your home screen. You're going to look at it much more than you're going to look at potentially hundreds of emails in your inbox. Collecting feedback, this can be collecting feedback from what your users are inputting or just collecting the analytic, analytics for how your app is being used. But why not? What, let's actually ask our customers what it is that they want. How do they want us to engage with them? And updates. This is key. Never, uh, never again will you need to have a situation where you need to send version 1.1 to a customer because it's been updated. Nothing is out of date. People will always have the most uh, up-to-date information and because of being able to update it, it's always going to be secure. So hopefully that's going to give you a broad spectrum, but it's about time we started getting into what it is here to find out about. So Fliplet is a prefab app builder. The benefits of that are the fact that we build the platform itself has built 90% of the app. So all of the applications that I'm going to show you a bit later on, some were built on Fliplet, but all of them could be built on Fliplet and they can be built by people who are non-technical. We have this no code editor. And at the end, when I get into actually showing you a demo, I'm going to be, I'm not technical at all. Those of you that I've spoken to in the past will know that I'm not technical. I cannot code. However, I'm going to build an app from scratch just to show you how quickly you can get that prototype up and running. But of course, that's no good. Just having the idea on a prototype is, is great, but however, it needs to be open source. You guys need to be able to integrate with on-prem systems, with, with things like HiQ, like uh, uh, SharePoint, all of these systems, or just a, a SQL database to be able to pull and make the data available within the app in a secure way. All of that is offered by Flipbit. You're going to see some of these components that are pre-built that allows you to pick them up, drag them into the screen, and you can build an app very, very quickly without needing any lines of code whatsoever. When it comes to getting your app out there and deploying it, well, absolutely, apps built on Flipboard will work on every single device. Uh, they can go into the public app stores if they adhere to Apple and Android's own rules around applications. Web apps can be launched immediately, or you can distribute them either via file download or via your MDM solutions or, or enterprise app stores. And lastly, um, many firms in the past have shied away from mobile, um, mainly because of the Kind of technical debt that comes with it there's a lot of maintenance that's needed and updates when it was all the responsibility of it then they didn't have the resource well now we take care of all of that infrastructure in work ensuring that when there's an ios update we take care of it and the security and everything else is, is on us you just get to focus on the content and the look and feel of the app, which is at the end of the day, the most important thing for your users. Uh, and our experience, we've worked now with over 55 global law firms. We do work with firms uh, outside of law as well. So professional services firms such as Deloitte, although the recent news where they bought a law firm last week could now uh, say that they're, they're, they're directly legal. Um, but you can see enterprise grade uh, applications are being produced by all of these firms and more. And you're gonna see some examples in just a moment. So let's let's crack on. Let's actually have a look at some of the apps uh, that these law firms have produced. So we're going to kick off with emergency management apps, first of all. So these applications, uh, generally, the key benefit and what makes these apps really awesome is that real time communication. Most of the time it's going to sit there redundant. They do include things like how to prepare some checklists and uh, uh, kind of run through so that people can get prepared for a dawn raid or um, but actually, when it happens, that's when the app comes into its own. It doesn't rely on any of your other infrastructure. It is completely standalone. And as soon as that raid happens, as soon as that warrant is handed over, you can start that real-time communication with your law representatives. You can take a photo of the, of the warrant and have a direct chat going with the legal expert before they even get on site. You can be getting guidance straight away. And of course, there's a compliance trial all the way through. So really, really powerful and valuable apps that, to be honest, all law firms hope their clients never have to use. But it's a great thing. It's a bit like insurance. 
Along the same lines is cyber. Again, similar things here, touch of a button and you're through to getting that advice. So if, you're, uh, if your central IT platform does have a cyber attack, again, all of the content, all of the advice, all of the help is stored on the, on the device itself, not on your main platform. So again, really awesome tool to be able to offer to your clients so that they feel more secure uh, dealing with a cyber related incident. And more general crisis leadership, this can be in anything. This could be from natural disaster, from, from any type of terrorist attack that's maybe happened, or it could be something like drone raid or, or a cyber attack. Whatever it is, this is a tool that, again, it has them offline capabilities. So if the worst case scenario, people have always got their phone on them. It can also be used to help your clients to get ready for, for uh, in terms of a, uh, if should a crisis happen. So three different types some firms they put all of these together under one heading as a, as a kind of emergency management app other firms are keeping them very very separate if you was to search the public app stores for this type of app you will find 30 plus uh, uh, different applications from different firms these are the public offering this is public information where they're just really marketing their dawn raid or their crisis leadership expertise a lot of these firms will offer a custom app, which will be very similar to the one that's in the app store, but will obviously have the content refined to suit that particular client. So practice specific, that was an area such as management. Now we're gonna look at some individual apps from different practices. So Clifford Chance built a litigation guide. Again, it's in the public app stores. Please go and have a look. Why is this app awesome? It's about being able to compare how the, the principles around litigation differ in different jurisdictions in different countries. For someone using this application, you can save your favorites. You can save the comparisons for particular client sets. So you've always got very, very quick access to it. Plus you can get notifications through. When something changes and you wanna be notified, you decide when you get that notification to come through. Government contracts, it's a huge, huge practice area. There's loads of regulation and information. What Crowd and Morin have done is they've brought this all together. They've consolidated all of the information into one easy to search uh, application. It also, again, has them regular alerts, them in-app notifications and push notifications, but it does so much more. This, they have quizzes, checklists, podcasts. They have a list of the up and coming events so that they can ensure their clients are getting all of the information they need. It's a really good award-winning app. Uh, Skadden, and this app's been around for a little while. Um, and again, it's a really powerful app. They spoke about this publicly uh, last year. The key here is they used to, and we talked about ring binders and tons of information that is being shared with clients. They were previously printing out four or, or three three inch binders of all of the political law uh, content. The cost of that printing and the distribution to their clients was actually more expensive than buying a piece of software that allowed them to produce the app, that allowed them to keep it up to date, that allowed them to customize it to suit uh, their own brand. And they've updated this app several times. Uh, the, the clients obviously are able to search, get to the information they need. The idea of sending out a, a ring binder with information and expecting your clients to sift through it is kind of going back to the days of Yellow Pages. So a really, really good app. Uh, when COVID first, first happened, some firms responded much quicker than others. And, and Blank Roam was a, was a client of ours, actually, who were aware of what our technology could do. And within two weeks, were able to put together this COVID state tracker. So being the first to market, being quick to market, minimal outlay, but producing a really valuable application that's targeted on one specific topic only. Of course, they had their, their additional COVID area, which had tons more information, but this was the quick checklist, the quick tracker, just to keep in line with, with what was happening across the US. And it was so easy to use um, that they got some real traction from it. So really the key also bit is, that is how quickly they got it out the door. Um, Kramer Levin, now advertising litigation, is quite a niche topic, but their clients, what they wanted to stay really close to their clients. So it was a very targeted audience. 
they've included regular reports because it was a, a, a practice where information changed on a regular basis. There was lots of information to share and they just felt that maybe emails weren't getting the engagement that they need. So they designed this application. And again, it's, it's being able to access on the go. We, everyone has tons of webinars. Uh, people have lots of time where they're not in the office now. So this allows them to, to get up to date with that information at a time that suits them. Um, CMS, this, is, this has recently been updated, I saw in the app stores. It's a really great application. Again, it's a comparison. We've talked about comparison apps already. This is yet another example. This is, allows for the insurance sector. So up-to-date news, keeping that, that end user abreast of the latest information, but also really powerful um, tool that allows them to look at different jurisdictions, again, different claims, lines of business. Uh, and again, you can save, build your own custom lists. So it is down to the individual user how this app works for them. Uh, Readsmith eDiscovery, this was the very first uh, eDiscovery app and they did some promotion around, around it. Um, this wasn't built on our platform. It's a, it's a really great app. The reason it's, it, it's the first app I've ever seen that got five out of five stars um, on the App Store. Everyone's saying how amazing it is. Now the audience, again, is kind of tiny, but it shows that they've put the time and effort in to supporting um, the people interested in, in e-discovery. Lots of information in the palm of your hand. Now, Hill Dickinson, they, they've done something a little bit different. So they produced a portal. So rather than having several different applications taking up that valuable real estate on your clients or your staff's phone, what they've decided to do is just have the one icon. The one icon, which is the Hill Dickinson portal. Once you go into that portal, you can see lots of different applications that are available. So you can give your client just one app and that can house lots of different solutions depending on what that client is interested in. So this is, it just leads off into other things. Really clever idea, uh, really good use of kind of understanding the needs of their clients. Um, Evershed Sutherland, um, again, another comparison app. This is for employment law. They were able to, again, take certain aspects of it this was about speed, again, getting that information out, getting it in front of the, the people that needed it. Why I love this app, why I think this app is absolutely awesome is because it's free. It's free. Many of the comparison tools that I've showed you before were designed for clients in mind. So they had to have a, a login issue to them. This one, you can go to the app stores now, you can download it and you can use every single feature in there. So it's a great way of marketing the capabilities. You can share the application, you can save your preferences. Um, it, it's, it's such a powerful application. And what they were then able to do is once they've got a design that worked for them, that was on brand, and had the powerful back end already established, they could then take the global pensions and employment guide and just swap out the content. And then all of a sudden you've got the commercial contracts guide. They're pretty similar. Now you can get all of your practices to have their specific, really powerful tool for their clients. No longer is it about one, one practice having an app for them and then a different practice having an app built by someone else for, with totally different functionality. You can now duplicate this work really quickly and, and, and get these solutions out to your clients. So country specific, this was uh, uh, an interesting one. We do have many global law firms who will produce an application, then make it available in multiple languages, but they would all be individual applications. When we worked with Deloitte, they decided to build it and they wanted the, the users to be able to switch between multiple languages. So in this example, and again, this app is in the public app stores, please go and have a look at it. It's in English and it's in Arabic. Now, this was an additional challenge for Fliplip because Arabic reads from right to left rather than left to right. Um, so there's a lot of design changes that were needed. But it means that you've got that functionality. This app has had absolutely thousands and thousands, if not tens of thousands of downloads. It is so popular and it cross sells other solutions that, that Deloitte offer as well. The surveys, the learning materials, and generally it's the, it's the news updates, um, which is why it's, what's made this app so popular. Let's look at a few internal applications because right at the start, we looked at why 
uh, why what makes an awesome application, why you should be building them. This one just last week won the best international uh, internal comms award, the gold award um, at the uh, Communicate Magazine award ceremony. Why I love this application and why I think this is absolutely awesome is because it was completely dedicated to non-work related features. It was about the wellness, the uh, support when remote working came in. They were able to get this award winning app from idea to live in three weeks. That is pretty impressive by any standards. In their first week, uh, first six weeks, they had over 1,200 people engaging with it. And again, it just showed that at this time, we've got that duty of care to look after our staff. We are interested in keeping that culture of the firm and, and, and making sure that people are engaging and it isn't just a, another Zoom call where you're talking about work. It's, this is your opportunity to have that coffee chat with someone and the feedback that they receive, there's a full case study on our website, but it is really a great, great app for, for allowing people to, to socialize uh, in a work environment, but not talking about work. Return to office. So this was an application around 30 firms have now launched this to support bringing staff back to the office. And what was really key, this was one where uh, Blank Rome, they did a press release about their one and they said that they was able to get this out the door within five weeks. So a tool that carried health questionnaires, it had the status of their offices, it carried all the compliance that was needed for uh, understanding what the requirements were for bringing people back to the office, um, all within five weeks. Really, really popular application. Another award-winning app, this one, the Knowledge Management Innovation Award uh, in 2020. And the judges described it as highly innovative, neat, simple, and a very effective solution. It was to make the partners within the firm understand what technology was available to them, but also what technology was available to their clients. And again, go back to what I said right at the start, keeping it simple, keeping it focused on one particular thing. There was obviously, uh, um, there was an opportunity for Mills and Weave to cram this app full of additional functionality. They did the right thing, they kept it simple. It says, if you're looking for tech, go to the app that's called What The Tech. That's all it can do. It isn't about trying to cram it full and turning it into an intranet style application. Client conversations. Eversheds are very keen on cross-selling. They're a huge global firm. They wanted to ensure that uh, their lawyers, their associates were aware and able to talk about all of the different uh, capabilities that the firm had. This app had everything from where all their offices were, all of the latest news. It gave them reasons so that if you was going to meet a client and didn't really know what to talk about, what was new, there was ideas listed within here. If you got a question from a client that you it was outside of your particular area of expertise, the app would have the answer at least at a high level. Why I think this is great is they made it available to everyone. All 5,000 people are now singing from the same song, song sheet and they're aware of everything that's going on in the firm because again, it works offline so they've got access to all of that information. Alumni, so this is key, every firm has alumni. Um, this one was awesome because it is about supporting uh, them attorneys that have moved on from your firm um, helping them, helping them to go on. A lot of people talk about alumni because at some point you've invested a lot of time, effort, money and expertise into these people. They may come back and work for you at some point. So being able to support them ongoing is, is for a lot of firms a super important thing to do. And I really like the fact that it isn't a case of once you've worked for a firm and you've gone, you're, you're no longer supported by them. That's a great thing about this industry. Uh, Idea management, there are tons of custom tools out there specifically just for idea management and innovation management. Um, a number of our customers, when they've looked into it, they just want to be able to collate ideas from the whole firm. This isn't about having an innovation team where it's their responsibility to come up with ideas that, that move the business forward. It's everybody's responsibility 
to come up with ideas. But how do we get them ideas rolling? Who do we pass them on to? Who do we speak to? This type of application can follow your internal processes and allow everybody that voice to be able to, to share their ideas and then manage it through that life cycle and give feedback to people. Um, associate life at this time, a lot of US firms are gearing up for their uh, new associates who will be joining them in the new year. So they have their summer associates, their fall associates in the, in the UK. We have our work experience. Um, how do we, one, attract them? You know, these millennials, they live on their mobile phone. It's what they expect. So how do we attract them? But once they've agreed to come on board and they're going to be with you for, for four weeks, six weeks, whatever the term is, how do we onboard them? These apps often have a, think of it like a, a, an event app, but for over a four week period, having that agenda, letting that, that new associate first day in the office, they know exactly where they're meant to go. Give them up to date directory, including the images. If they can see what people look like, they're gonna be able to, to settle in much quicker. Share the wins, share the important stuff that's gonna engage these new starters uh, within your firm. Of course, it can, it can work offline and it can house lots of uh, uh, information that you need them to be able to understand. You can include quizzes, tests, and take regular surveys and feedback from them. I haven't got a specific example. It is an internal app, so very few firms are kind of promoting this, but I can tell you this is, this is a very popular app with our, with our firms. Now, by 2024, Gartner are saying that, uh, that the large enterprises will be using a minimum of four low-code development tools. Most firms that work with Fliplet are also using other low-code tools, things like Brighter, like the Ota Logic. It isn't about you just need one low-code tool and that's it, you've ticked the box. It's about having the right tool for the right job. And I reckon that low-code app development will account for 65%. In fact, I read a report today that said they're now estimating it's going to be 75% of all that uh, development. So hopefully they've given you a few ideas around some, some awesome applications, and that's going to lead you to being able to say, OK, well, in my firm, these are the things, these are the practices that I think would benefit. And you can share that back with your, with your teams. But let's now have a look at how you can go about building something uh, yourself. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump into our studio. Now, if you want to do everything I'm about to show you, I would encourage you to do it yourself. Just go to fliplit.com and click on create a free account. You can then get into our studio and you can do everything that I'm about to show you. Uh, we just spoke about an associate life app. So I'm going to build a prototype for an associate life app that you guys would be able to do as well. So I'm going to click on a new app. Now, rather than use these uh, templates that we have, and you can see there's many of them there, I'm going to use one. So I'm going to start from absolute scratch, and I'm going to call it, I'll just call it onboarding. Now, let's hope that my internet connection stays powerful, because it's been playing up. But at your moment, there's absolutely nothing there. So what I need to do is add some screens. So let's think about what an associate life or an onboarding application is going to need. But well, the first thing, I want a couple of screens to tell the user what it is that this app is designed to do. I want them to be able to log in, so let's add one of them. Chat, absolutely, they're going to want a WhatsApp style and they're going to want notifications being sent through to them. It's probably going to be some common message, things like that. Uh, so we want a staff directory, absolutely. We want a news feed and we want their agenda to be added to it as well. Uh, we'll leave that out for a moment. Yeah, definitely want some surveys to collect feedback from them. I want a, a map of the office so they know where they're meant to be going. Uh, I won't include that one. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything that I'm gonna need. So now that's 10 screens. So now I'm gonna add them. This is now compiling them 10, 10 screens which have pre-built components within them into your application. The idea is that once you've got that, all you've got to do is add your content and link them together. So I'm going to give this a minute to load, and then I'm going to jump into the screens and show you how you can start to edit this, because I'd love for you guys to be going away, opening up a free account, 
and producing some prototypes, getting some ideas that you can physically put in front of people um, to understand and bring to life that idea. So what you can see here is I'm in edit mode at the moment. Um, I'm looking at it on a mobile phone, but I can easily change the view to see what it would look like on a uh, iPad in this case, but also if it was a desktop application. So you can very quickly see how it, it will automatically render dependent on the type of uh, type of device that you're looking at it on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into preview mode because before I start to edit it, I want to see what it is and how things work. Now, if I wanted to, yes, I can I can click through and it will work here, but I can also use Fliplet Viewer. Now, this is an app from Fliplet that's in the app stores. I can log in using the same credentials that I've logged into the Fliplet Studio in, and then I will be able to play with this app on my mobile phone so I can get a real life experience. You can then say, OK, I'm going to share this with a colleague. And just by typing in their email address and maybe giving them preview only, your colleagues can now play with this app on their phone on the other side of the world, giving you feedback on, on your, your idea. So really quick to innovate uh, and bring, bring your ideas into the, the real world. So you can see here, this was onboarding. So I'm just going to click through and you can see that in this case, it's just one slider. But when I click on finish intro, nothing works. So I need to add that in. I've got a login screen, which again, currently isn't going to work, but it is going to give me, you know, a login details. I've got messaging, uh, a directory. Let's just have a look at how that works. So directory over here, I've got search and filters, so I can different locations, different skill sets, different expertise. And if I click on one, nice full bleed, large image, and then details plus phone, one click phone, one click email, and then whatever information I want to be able to make available for that user. So great. I've also got a news feed. This can be used for all of the, the wins for your firm, information that is key to a new starter coming on board. I've also got the calendar. So this is on Monday morning. This is where you should be meeting. This is when you've got a meeting with your mentor. This is when you're going to be doing a, your first test or your security review. And then you can jump into various days and that could be spaced out for the whole month, individual to each and every user of it. So they can have a custom list. Uh, I also included a survey. So the survey is here. And again, it, it works. I can add information. I can give myself five or four stars. It's got upload image. It even has a signature box or pictures, whatever you want to call it. And then we have the interactive graphic. So yeah, if this was a map of our office, it'd be great so that they know where the canteen is, they know where the emergency exits are or the offices or where they're meant to be at any given point in time. So brilliant, I think for, for a starter for 10, that kind of works. There's probably gonna be additional information. There's probably gonna be you know, PDFs or, or more forms that you're gonna want them to complete. But for now, let's have a look at how we then go in and start to edit and date this information. So let's start with onboarding because that's their first screen of where they're going to land. Um, so as you as I hover over it, you see that it goes orange. I'm just going to click on that. That opens up the component. So this is a slider component and I want to replace the image because I don't want it to say hello. I'm just going to have change it to something else. Easy as that. I can then change the, the text here. Really simple. Anyone can do it. And then on the second slider, again, similar thing, but this time it says the link action. So I want it to display another screen. When they, when they get to that second screen, I want them to do it and I want it to take it to the login screen. Simple as that, click save and close. Now let's jump into preview. Now this time, when I click through uh, the onboarding, there's my new image. If I click through, there it is. And when I click this, it should automatically you see this drop down. It's now taken me to the login page. That's the power of no code. That's the power of you being able to produce that prototype super, super quick. If we wanted to look at the article. In this case, again, a hover, you'll see that this is an image standalone. So I may want to change that image. I may want to add a video. If I did, I can pick up that and drop it where I want it. So rather than having an image, I can delete that. 
I've now got a video player there. That can either be linked to a, a YouTube video or an offline video if you've uploaded one. And again, I've just dragged, I've dropped it in. It's now asking me to say, browse your library. What video do you want to put here? If I want to update the text, it is just a text editor. So I can just write. Same with this. And again, I've got a button. If I click on a button, what do I want it to do? So the link action, do I want it to go to another screen? Do I want it to play a video? In this case, display another screen. What screen is it you want it to go to? I'm going to say the directory for ease and therefore give it a name. Directory, click save and close. If I now go into preview, let's have a look at what it looks like. The video is there, I can play it if I wanted to. There's my text and if I click on directory, it's now jumped and moved over. Hopefully you can see how easy it is to use um, this and get something live and up and running. It's probably quicker than drawing wireframes to try and get your idea across. This is a real life thing that people can use. I'm conscious of time. We're coming up to the 45 minute mark um, and I wanna give you guys the opportunity to ask any questions. So the last thing I wanted to show you is once you've got this application to the stage where you want to share it with people, you can now publish it. Now, during the free account, or with the free account, you can publish it as a web app for free. So if I wanted to publish this now, I simply click on publish, click on publish, and this is now producing that URL is a live URL. I can embed it into my website or somewhere else if I wanted to. I can also click on that link. You'll see it's opened up a whole new website and now the web app is live. As quick as that. I will go back and just unpublish it. Okay, um, that's it from me. So Dave, over to you, are, are there any questions? Um, yeah, we've got a few questions um, that have come in over the course of the last 45 minutes. That was brilliant, by the way, Mike, really good, really useful um, insight into some of those, those apps and so the world that we're in there, um, but I'll start um, start here. So, um, could I build a multi-purpose emergency app, for example, have dorm raids, cybersecurity, and maybe you know, terrorist-related things all in one app? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, you can. Yeah, many firms have have done that. Again, that real estate having. Let's just turn my my camera back on. Having that real estate um, is really valuable. So, if you wanted to have one solution that will cover all of them topics, absolutely. Perfect. Um, with the applications that have been built on your platform, have all these been built by your client directly or by Fliplet? Uh, a bit of a mix. So initially, if when a new firm starts to work with us, we will build the first five applications for them. And we will use that as an opportunity to train the firm. The firms that have been with us for uh, uh, an amount of time, ones like the, uh, you know, the, the ones from the likes of Eversheds and Blank Rome, they're very much they go off and do it themselves. We are very much here for support though. So at any point, especially if they're doing something new and innovative, we will support them. So it's a bit of a mix between us doing it initially, um, but and then firms being able to produce the apps ongoing for the future. Perfect. One in here from from um, from someone on the, the, the live chat here. So um, how do you make people go to apps for internal work information when they're already looking at intranets and other internal platforms on their desktops? So if you use an MDM solution, you can put the app directly onto your user's phone. Um, again, it's about the promotion. So we don't just give you a piece of technology. We share with you the insights into the industry, the success of how you get that engagement. If At the end of the day, if the app is valuable, people will use it. So your communication has to be right to sell that value into the end users saying why this app is not necessarily and very rarely is an app a replacement for something so if you've got your intranet already absolutely that's still where they would go to if they were at their desk but mobilizing certain aspects of that app that they can then use and access outside of that network in a secure way is what you're looking to do so give them options perfect thank you very much um and this is sort of like a three-part question so one is you know we don't have any developers in-house as such? So, so how would we develop the apps? On, on top of that, um, what typical stakeholders are maybe involved in designing these apps? And then the final part of that, um, is there options if we did have developers to sort of play around with code in any of these templates? 
yeah, three great questions. First of all, if you don't have any developers, don't worry. Um, you, in the majority of times, you don't need custom code or developers to be able to use this. What you will have is the skill set in-house that will look after your infrastructure. So who looks after the databases? Who looks after the, the backend information? They're the people that we're going to need to speak to to be able to integrate if that's what you want to do. So if you want to be pulling information from your uh, an, an on-prem secure data source into the apps, we can help with the setup of it. And most of it is drag and drop. But of course, we will need to speak to someone on the, the security or technical side to help with that. Um, if you do have technical guys, and what I was going to do here is just show you that we do have down here developer options. So if your guys like a bit of code and they want to build on top, input custom CSS, custom JavaScript, custom HTML to build on top of what we offer. So although we process a no code solution, as I mentioned right at the start, it is very much open source. So you, your, your teams can take what we've got, build out that prototype, and then your more technical guys, if you have them and if you have the need, you can add custom code as well. Uh, and if you don't have any developers, but you do have a need for something custom, just speak to us and we, you know most of the time we will be able to do it for you perfect um so a couple of more here as well um a couple more have coming from chat actually where you've been going on there mike so can your platform integrate with microsoft azure for user authentication yes excellent um from a sort of follow-on from the internet question earlier um was um my thought was that the award-winning mnr what the tech app seems really great, but I can't understand why you'd want that information on a mobile device and not on the internet. No, uh, valid point. Uh, you're not always in the office. You're not always, when you're out meeting a client, that question could come up. You may want to be able to find that information there and then. What we've learned, and, and we're seeing this more and more, lawyers are very they do not want to carry work over. If they're speaking to a client, they want to be able to give them the answer and move on to the next thing. They don't want to have to say, I'll tell you what, I'll make a list. When I get back to the office, I'll look up all of this information and I'll email because you could miss out on an opportunity. Being able to use it on their phone or by doing some advice, some research prior to going to meet the client, it could be in that taxi journey over to meet them or on the train or at the weekend. It's just another reason. If you're ever going to make the excuse that the information is already available somewhere else, then think about how you use LinkedIn. Think about how you use Facebook. Think about how you do your banking. All of these places have a website, but you have to log in and authenticate and, and wait for it to load and it doesn't work offline. So being able to access it via an app directly in the same way you would with your LinkedIn profile or your banking app, it's there, it's specific, it gives you the knowledge you need when you need it. Perfect. And I think sort of further to that question, I think part of the question was around um, if it's maybe just an internal resource, Mike, they might be able to just, I guess, rather than having a mobile app, if it was just something that was standalone on a desktop, they could create a, a web app that would link back to from the internet, which is probably the question as well. Uh, absolutely. I mean, what, but I have both. I mean, exactly. why not? The fact that you can have it. And, and again, people are, are moving away from, from desktop. And what are they going to do if they go in to see a customer and that customer, you've done your research on your desktop computer, you've said, these are the solutions that I'm going to offer to that client. What are you then going to do? Are you then going to screen print or download a PDF that you're going to give to the client? What if they turn around and say, oh, we've already looked into that and that's no longer relevant. You're like, well, I'm done. I need to wait till I get back to the office. So again, it's just that agile ease of use um, and the, but you're absolutely right. Yes, you could build it and you could embed it into your existing internet if you wanted to. And then a couple more because I'm conscious of time here. So um, one was, uh, does Fliplet support us with our app build or will it be done 100% by our resource? I think you've answered part of that. And how does our ongoing support look? So how does the ongoing Fliplet support look beyond the build of the app? Uh, yeah, great question. So the majority of times, as I mentioned, the first thing we do with a new client is we spend eight weeks doing an onboarding and training. During them eight weeks, we're going to build three to five applications, ideally with as many different departments within your organization as possible, because this is, this is about decentralizing app creation. 
Of course, you're still going to have governance, probably run by IT or security, to make sure that only apps go live at the right time with the correct level of security. However, we want people to be able to produce app ideas in the way that I've just shown you on our, on our studio there. So we will very much spend time with you creating the initial applications. Ongoing, we issue you with an account manager and a customer success manager. And we have these both in the US and in the UK, meaning that at any point you can pick up the phone, you can use live chat, you can send an email to your representative and they will come back and they will help you. If you need additional resource, if you need additional features, if you need help and support, we are there uh, um, to help out when needed. If it's a full build that you need done, the majority of our multi-app plans, which are the unlimited app plans, they come with a number of service days. So rather than having to keep going back to the organization and asking for another PO for another piece of custom development, we include a number of service days to encourage you to come to us and say, right, well, I'm going to cash in them service days and I want you to produce an app for us. Perfect. And I think that's probably covered off most of the questions we've had and obviously conscious of time. So um, thanks, that Mike. It's brilliant. OK, well, guys, once again, thank you ever so much for uh, for attending. I hope that it was uh, useful and you got a few ideas uh, for applications that your firm could benefit from. Uh, we have got a new marketing app template that will encompass a ton of features that's similar to those that you've seen already. So things like comparisons, things like analysis, decision trees, uh, quizzes, tests, all of that is going to be in our new marketing app template. You can pick and choose the features that are going to work uh, for your app idea. So there's going to be a new webinar to help you get the most out of that app. But that'll be towards the end of November. Uh, and then we're going to have many more, but we are probably going to have a break from live ones until the new year. So if I don't speak to you before, stay safe uh, and enjoy the Christmas break and happy Thanksgiving to those uh, US friends of ours. Thank you guys, take good care.